good evening to all i thank dr pramod and his team for inviting me here uh, today i am going to speak about transforaminal approach for lateral lesis stenosis lateral lesis is a area that is medial to the pedicle and lateral to the dura and the traversing root ex exits the dural sac and migrates downwards and posteriorly it is bounded by the sap so it is called the subarticular zone and central canal is the area which lies between the two facet joints the boundaries laterally the pedicle medially the central canal posteriorly sap and anteriorly the disc the etiology commonly it is disc herniation ligamentum plum hypertrophy facetal osteophytes annular bulge or calcification hypertrophy of the facet capsule vertebral end plate osteophytes list disease synovial cyst and rarely it can be infection so this is how the normal spine with aging becomes a stenotic spine you can see all the changes which happen with aging facetal arthritis ligamentum plum buckling the annular bulge which cause the stenosis uh, martin knight described this foraminoplasty technique which involves decompressing both the exiting and the traversing roots for this we need to remove the superior foraminal ligament we have to remove the facetal osteophytes and plate osteophytes and we have to do decompression from pedicle to pedicle the aim is to decompress both the roots so this is a slide from dr gore and uh, dr yang the area which is marked red here uh, is the bone resection and this can be done with the two techniques out, either outside in or visualized foraminoplasty i do not prefer outside in technique because of some reasons uh, because it is a blind procedure it requires radiation there is more bleeding more pain and sometimes you can damage the facet and there is always a risk of injuring the root or the dura so i always do a visualized foraminoplasty Uh, we undercut the facet using burr this does not cause ble bleeding and we can uh, the amount of facet resection is minimal because you can do a controlled resection and the risk of dural injury is negligible so you have to use some kind of burr i use this striker attachment burrs which are uh, very convenient of course you should have all these instruments so diamond burrs carbide burrs carisons uh, and locators curettes forceps and uh, you have to address the pathology which is in place there is a disc herniation facet hypertrophy or ligamentum plum buckling and target uh, area is always the disc either you do uh, intradiscal landing or extradiscal this already i have discussed uh, we have to decompress both the roots and uh, phloem has to be cut and medial to the phloem is your uh, traversing root uh, challenges it is technically difficult time consuming there is bleeding patient cooperation is must because we do it under regional or local anesthesia we need special instruments complication it can cause there can be post operative dyspepsia root injury dural tear facet damage these are rare not very common i'll show you two three cases this is the adjacent segment degeneration in an elderly lady very severe uh, uh, right sided pain so in this case uh, endoscopic decompression was done disc was not entered can you play the video okay so this is the facet which we are drilling so medial to the facet is the root here i am using curette because this is an elderly osteoporotic patient so we have to remove the phloem once you remove the phloem you can see both the exiting and traversing root very clearly and this is a post op mri patient had excellent relief and patient did not require any uh, revision fixation this is another case 55 year old lady 
with the alpha and S1 radicular pain due to foraminal stenosis and you can see there is a complete uh, foraminal block. This required a trans approach and this is the final decompression. So this is the end point of decompression. You can see both the roots pulsating very well. The post-operative MRI patient had excellent relief. This is the actual section. As is another patient, elderly lady with the listesis at two levels with the disc herniation at alpha S1 level. You can see the foraminal stenosis, I mean the lateral risk stenosis at 4-5, disc herniation at alpha S1 level. Both were approached with a single incision and uh, you, you can see this video here, the post-operative MRI and you can see both levels are decompressed well. And at four years follow-up, patient is doing extremely well. She had come twice only for some back pain, that's all. And there is no worsening of lysis. This is the last case. This is a patient with tuberculosis spine uh, on ATT with severe uh, radicular pain at L3-4 level. You can see the granulation tissue compressing the uh, dura. So this was done endoscopic because other option probably for him would be fusion. This is at the end of... Uh, can you play the video? So end of decompression. Uh, it was not pus, it was all uh, hard granulation tissue which required removal. You can see how beautiful you can achieve decompression with transforaminal approach here. This is a post-operative MRI, immediate post-op. You can see all the granulation tissue is decompressed. This is at one year. Disease has healed very well with the anti treatment. The canal is restored to normal size. This is the X-ray, pre-op, and this is the post-op. So take home message, you can do a lateral disease decompression with transforaminal approach, but there is a definitive surgical, uh, surgeon factor. Case selection is important. Of course, nowadays we do more with the interline approach because it's far more direct and easier approach to do. Thank you.